tutti. Yeah, I promise. Okay. Great, let's get this started then. Can you give us an overview? An overview of what? What would you like to know? Everything. A lot. <laughs> the plot. The plot I can. Um, look, we're really excited. Black Panther is a hugely important movie for us. It's something we've been planning uh, for a lot of years, but definitely came to fruition once we figured out how to integrate him to Civil War. But now that he's been introduced to people, what we think is important is making sure that the Black Panther movie is something that stands alone. You know, he's a character with a huge history, and that history includes a lot of great stories, a lot of great uh, secondary characters and villains, and we think this movie makes the best of, of all of that. Anything from the McGregor run, through the Christopher Priest run, through the modern Ta-Nehisi Coates run. We want to pull from all that to make this a movie that is unlike anything we've done before, and also does justice to a character that we think is really cool. When the Black Panther and also Spider-Man were, were both introduced mm -hmm. in Civil War, did you, did you know that this was going to go on as a standalone thing at the time? Or we were hopeful. Months? We were super hopeful. Yeah. Um, you know, we'd been developing a Black Panther standalone movie before Civil War, and we never could find the right way in, is the truth. Um, so it's something that we had worked with writers on. Uh, but when we introduced him in Civil War, it, it was sort of a kind of a testing ground to see how audiences would respond to him and what we were really excited about was how much he stood out in that film in a film by the way with everybody in it and with giant man and even the return of spider-man to the marvel cinematic universe a lot of people came away talking about black panther which we thought was great because it sort of justified our belief in the character and because he was introduced it allowed us to jump past some of the origin story stuff that we were struggling with in a standalone movie because now he's just a character now he's you know sort of a James Bond character who is almost fully realized and we can just set him out on an adventure rather than having to explain a ton of backstory of, of how he became the Black Panther. And is this a totally original story or is it from one of the comic books? It's pretty original you know we had had a lot of ideas of what we wanted from Black Panther when we engaged Ryan Coogler who's our director and also co-wrote the script with Joe Robert Cole they came with some ideas as well it definitely borrows again from pieces of what had come before in publishing but it's its own story it's, there's nothing there's nothing in publishing that is like this film. Could you say a few words about yeah, we wanted to really ground the movie uh, in cinematography that felt really real and visceral because the world of Wakanda we think is so interesting, but the mistake that we were trying to avoid was making Wakanda feel like a place that wasn't of this earth. And so that goes all the way through production design and how we shoot it. If it felt like Asgard, we felt we were going to lose. Right, because Asgard is this place that doesn't exist here. And that would make the Wakandan people then feel alien. And the truth is Wakandans are human like you and I. They just happen to live in a place that's super advanced. So the cinematography had to feel like something that was grounded and of our world to make these people feel like real human beings on Earth. Compared to the other superheroes, what you think is different? What I think is interesting about him is he's a superhero, but he's also the king of a country. So the, uh, the repercussions of his action carry over politically as well as personally. You know, Captain America can go on an adventure, and the worst thing that will happen to him, which has happened to him a couple of times, is he becomes an enemy of the state, right? Uh, Black Panther is responsible not only for himself, but for an entire country of people. So he's making decisions both as a hero and as a politician. And that's something on a character level that no one else in the Marvel Universe has to deal with. And it allows us to tell stories then that are really complicated because it's not only doing the right thing for Panther in the moment, it's doing the right thing for a nation of people. You grew up as a massive comic book obsessive, right? So did you ever imagine growing up that the likes of Falcon or Black Panther would ever make it to the big screen? No, is the truth. I mean, you know, as a fan in the, in the 70s and 80s, when I started reading comics, it didn't feel like those movies were going to be, be made at all. You know what I mean? I was so excited when the first X-Men movie or the first Spider-Man movie or the first Blade movie came into the fore. Um, but Black Panther, Falcon, Captain America even, I would argue, seemed so comic booky that I didn't know how they would ever be translated. Um, but once I think Iron Man happened and you saw something that felt very out there, 
being given to people in a, a way that was really relatable, it seemed like, oh, everything was possible now, you know? And I still remember I had a Captain America book with uh, him at the center, Panther on one side and Falcon on the other side. As a kid, I thought that was a great image. And to, to see all those characters now living and breathing in the Marvel Cinematic Universe is amazing to me. Yeah, you know, when we were casting uh, uh, Black Panther for Civil War, it was a very short list for us, is the truth. Uh, and we had seen 42, which we all loved internally because we felt like he disappeared into the role of Jackie Robinson in a way. Um, and we wanted Panther to be a character that didn't carry any baggage. You know what I mean? Uh, not that we could have gotten Will Smith, but when you cast a Will Smith-like person, you are watching Will Smith play Black Panther. We wanted somebody who could just be Black Panther. Um, and because Marvel is able to take some chances on casting, because we're not beholden to trying to get people to see the movie because of who's in it, we can take some interesting casting swings. And I think Chadwick is so talented as an actor and even Get On Up, which we hadn't seen at the time, but we were excited to see. Uh, we'd seen some press materials and some trailers. You know, he's a great character actor, and I say that in the best possible way. He disappears into the characters, and I think he's done that with, with T'Challa. Can I ask you, uh, can I, ask you I, I know that the Marvel Universe has shot overseas uh, a lot of times, the second unit is in South Korea. Mm -hmm. Was there any debate about actually going to somewhere in Africa and shooting? Yeah, we explored and, and actually scouted South Africa pretty extensively. The truth was, for the size of the movie and the size of our sets, the infrastructure there was going to be pretty difficult to deliver on the scale of the movie. And so we balanced very much... Uh, shooting in Africa for all the reasons you want to shoot a movie called Black Panther in Africa and getting enough on the screen so that we give everybody what they want out of the character, you know. Uh, and, and it at some point becomes a, a question of economics and the truth is we wanted as much money as possible on the screen and that meant shooting in Atlanta. Are there a lot of images in the movie of natural sets like German? Yeah, we have a really ex extensive second unit shooting in Africa as well for a lot of our plate stuff. So but that it not in South Africa, where, where, where are you? yeah, in South Africa and Africa? and Uganda, uh, because there's great sort of vistas that we wanted to capture and wanted to be a part of this film, even though we couldn't have our first unit there. We wanted those images in the movie. I think they're really important. You said that you have planned the Black Panther movie for years. Mm -hmm. uh, the MCU, it's a huge universe. Is it harder or easier to follow the path to connect everything? Because yeah. also it's the right things because not all the characters could be on film, I guess. Yeah. How hard was that? It, it, it is hard and gets harder. It's sort of the fun of the job, but as there are more stories being told and more characters introduced, you're sort of, uh, you know, you're trying not to get in the way of other movies, but you're also uh, trying to make sure all the storytelling is headed in one direction, if that makes sense. Uh, it's, you know, for us, having phases is important because we kind of know in each phase what we're building towards, and they tend to be the Avengers movies. Uh, in this case, we knew Civil War was the introduction of Black Panther. Uh, we knew Avengers 3 was coming, and we sort of had a rough idea of what that was, so we knew there was a room, storytelling-wise, to tell a really cool standalone Black Panther movie that fit within the larger MCU. But there are always things that you're, you're trying to avoid, or you're, you know, you're talking to your other executives on other films to make sure you're not telling stories that duplicate each other or you're not using the same characters in ways that seem uh, disingenuous. Speaking of this again, uh, mm -hmm. the MCU, I mean, Black Panther is set right before uh, Infinity War. Mm -hmm. It's the last movie before Infinity War. Mm -hmm. Do you feel a certain pressure to set the stage right or is Black Panther entirely independent? It's pretty independent, but it, there is storytelling in Black Panther that we wanted to introduce before we got to Avengers. Um, you know, I think we feel pressure about all of our movies all of the time because the truth is we make so few movies in the world of studios making films that any one movie not working would be crushing to us. And I think just personally we want all, all of our movies to work. Um, Black Panther, I feel personal pressure delivering because it's such an important movie, I think, um, both as a piece of entertainment and as, as a piece of culture. Um, but I don't think I feel any more pressure than working on Civil War, which at the time seemed like something that could potentially not work uh, because of the amount of characters we were balancing. You know, We just really want this movie to be good, and I think Ryan Coogler would say, for him, it's just important that people love the character in the way that he loves the character. Will there be, um, I mean, were you also conscious of the fact that this is like one of the rare superhero properties that's helmed by a non-white character, and 
are you is there going to be a nod to that in the themes that are explored or in the writing? I don't think it's an overt nod. I think the film existing is the nod. You know what I mean? I think that it's not necessary for us to add an extra layer of 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 theme that is specifically about race because the character exists and that's enough. Um, we wanted it to work as a piece of entertainment that people enjoyed, regardless of the politics of anything. Um, you're obviously conscious of it. You can't not be. Uh, and we think it's really special because of it. But the movie doesn't go out, out, out of its way to talk about anything specific. I don't believe we're getting access to Ryan today. Can you talk about how he came on board and what his thoughts were? Yeah, you know, Ryan is uh, also a, a comic book fan and has been his whole life. Um, we were fans of his. You know, I remember seeing Fruitvale Station and sort of being shattered by how emotional it was. Uh, and we had seen the trailer for Creed and sort of tracked him down, honestly, based on those two things. Um, Ryan is a young filmmaker for us. He's just young in his life as a filmmaker. He's young as a person. Um, but he's very, very smart. Uh, and he's a very smart storyteller. And I think it helped in this sense to have someone who is a writer and a director because he could really help us both shape the story and then also breathe life into that story. Um, our first conversations, I think, you know, he was coming off of Creed, which was in comparison a smaller film so I think the size of the movie was a big question for him how do I get my head around doing you know a giant Marvel movie when I'm coming off of a relatively smaller scale film um, and he wanted to make sure that we wanted to tell the same story that we wanted to tell the story of T'Challa who is a, a king uh, but also a hero who is uh, very much you know an African king and all of what that means you know the movie itself, I think, is very steeped in cultures from all over Africa because of Ryan, because that's what he's interested in. Um, so his point of view is very uh, felt very strongly through the film. Um, and we wanted a filmmaker with a strong point of view. We didn't want somebody just to come in and shoot something that we had crafted, because I don't think it would have been as good. I know Ryan had a, had a great relationship with, with Michael B. And, and speaking of like characters reoccurring, Michael B. is you know appeared in Marvel Universe. Or was it was it just because of his relationship with Michael B that I was able to bring him back into this into this story in a different? Yeah, I mean, yes, yes is the short answer. They are very good friends, uh, uh, and it was one of the f first people that that Ryan pitched. We'd actually talked with Michael B Jordan about a role earlier as well, so I had met him uh, years before. So we both had the sense that he was super talented because he's super talented. Um, you know, dancing around the Fantastic Four of it all was not easy uh, because Fox and, and Disney are not the same company, you know. Uh, but ultimately, you know, we were able to get him into our world. And I think whether or not Fox makes another Fantastic Four movie is up to them. But we were just so happy to have him as a part of our movie. Can you mention a few words about the villain, the Yeah, you know, uh, Claw is... I would argue in, in sort of the panther mythology, one of sort of one or one A, the most important panther villain. Um, when we introduced him in Age of Ultron, we weren't sure how it was all going to pan out, whether or not we we're going to ever do a panther movie or not. Um, but once we knew we were doing a panther movie, the, one of the first calls we made was to Andy. Andy Serkis is so talented. And I confess, I know him more for his motion capture work. Uh, seeing him on set is amazing. He's an amazing live action actor and we're so lucky to have him. Uh, Claw is a really cool villain. He's different than our other villains. You know, there's obviously going to be personal connections with Panther that we get to explore. Um, and performance wise, he brings such a sort of live wire crazy energy to the movie. We're really excited about him. You mentioned earlier about, you know, yourself included with being comic book fans and trying to nail the, nail the way that the Black Panther has to deal with both the people as well as his role as the Black Panther, um, which was kind of in Ta-Nehisi Coates' recent, that was his, like the main bulk of the first part of mm -hmm. his uh, series. Did you guys pull on Coates at all to get any ideas or at least reference it? We, uh, yeah, a little bit. I mean, he had just started his run when we started development, so we honestly pulled more from Priest, uh, who has a similar balance of what it means to be a king versus what it means to be a hero. Um, and I think in his run, that's, I would argue thematically almost the point of every one of his sort of mini arcs was this guy who was trying to do the right thing and that either the world was mad at him because he was favoring Wakanda or Wakanda was mad at him because he was favoring the world and he paid a personal price no matter what he did. That tension is what our movie is also built on. 
Um, and we had talked with Chris very early on as well, who's an amazing, talented writer. Um, but Ryan also knows ta So it was a little bit of both. I think, you know, again, the, the ta run was very early. Uh, but there's some imagery even from the Still Freeze artwork that we also borrowed. So it's, it's a little bit of both, but Priest was a, has a big impression as well. I know you cannot tell much, but can you a little bit talk about the story in our this Yeah, look, it, it picks up where Civil War left off as far as T'Challa's story. You know, his father's just been killed. Uh, he's returning home to Wakanda. And I think for the nation of Wakanda, they're dealing with the death of a king and who's going to sort of fill that void. Um, obviously, T'Challa would be the obvious choice, but not everybody in Wakanda agrees with both what T'Chaka was doing, being out, out of the nation at the UN, and I, I would argue a little disappointed that T'Challa was unable to keep his father safe. So there's some internal tension in the country, uh, which is exacerbated, again, when a character like Ulysses Claw, who has a history with Wakanda, sort of pops back up on the radar. So you're sort of dealing with some internal politics as well as the return of, I think they would argue, one of their, the biggest international terrorists in their history. Mm-hmm. Um, you usually have very big names in terms of villains. Mm-hmm. You usually name Captain America 1, uh, now you have Kate Blanchett for Thor 3, but they usually only last for one movie. Mm-hmm. Um, will it be different for any circuit? Is there a longer arc plan, or is it limited to Black Panther? We always have ideas of storytelling. You know, we tend to be a one movie at a time kind of company and to make sure that the storytelling is tight here. Uh, when you have a character like Claw and an actor like Andy Serkis, you always have a million ideas of what could be cool. Um, but we'll see how he's received in this this movie. You know. Can you talk about how you're working with Kevin Feige on this project in particular? Yeah, look, Kevin is uh, one of the producers, so he's always his input is is always there, and he's he's around as much as he can be while also juggling the million other Marvel movies that are either in post production or in pre production or actually shooting. Um, but uh, he is a huge part of the creative process, you know, has been in all of the story meetings, is on set as much as possible, has a great relationship with Ryan, which is helpful, you know. Um, he's a really smart storyteller, so, you know. Can, can you tell us a little about, um, just briefly, about your origin story? You're the only African-American producer in the Marvel film division. Um, can you tell us a little about how you, you got started? I mean, I know it's a big inspiration for a lot of kids trying to... Yeah, I mean, I um, look, I grew up reading comics and watching movies, right? Uh, I didn't go to school for film, but I always knew I wanted to do film. So I interned when I was in college, and that turned into a job working for Columbia Pictures. Uh, I did that for a while, and, and also was a PA on, a, on movies. One of the movies I was a PA on was Spider-Man 2, with Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2, which is the first time I met Kevin who at the time was working for Avi, who was running Marvel. Um, and then I, I, you know, I went on and worked at a couple of smaller independent production companies. Uh, and then, boy, uh, a little over six years ago now, Marvel started to expand. They, did, they were in production on Iron Man 2. They knew they wanted to do more movies. Uh, and I had heard that they were hiring and essentially cold called a guy I met once and said, hey, I heard you're looking for people. And he said, you like comics, right? And I said, yeah. I sent him my resume, he gave it to Kevin, Kevin saw that I was a piano Spider-Man too, and called me in, and vaguely remembered me, because Kevin, re- his, he's got a mind like a sealed trap, he kind of remembers everyone, we hit it off, he realized how much I really didn't know about comics, uh, and that I also loved movies, um, and, and I was very lucky to get the job, and started working with the writers in the writers program, including Nicole Perlman, who was uh, doing Guardians of the Galaxy, and we sort of got that up and running, and um, Kevin said, look, I'm not sure when we're going to make Guardians, but I know we're making Captain America 2. Uh, and that was the first film I did for them. And I did uh, 2 and 3 and now Panther. So it's been, I feel very lucky. It's a great company, you know. Um, Kevin's, a, again, a very, very smart producer. Uh, and I'm just really happy to be here. How many years has that been since? A little, uh, I guess a little over seven now. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was 2010 when yeah, I started. I know TV and cinema doesn't always go together, but was the popularity of Luke Cage, was it a little bit of a testing round for how, I mean, I know the Civil War was for sure, but yeah. did y'all look at how Luke Cage was received in the Marvel Universe on TV and kind of project what... Uh, a little bit. I mean, we definitely are very aware of what's happening on TV and watch all the TV shows and read the scripts when we can. Um, I would argue, I think, 
almost more than that, introducing the Falcon was a bigger, like, bellwether of, like, and even, by the way, Nick Fury, I always forget, but, like, from the beginning, you know, what I think is great and, and what I think box office is showing in general, people just want good stories, you know, whether it's Fast and Furious. I mean, it can be anything, really. If it's good, people are going to go see it, regardless of color. And, and I think that's something that studios are learning and maybe more slowly than we'd like. Uh, but at Marvel, it's never been a question of, is this going to work? It's just, what's the right story? You know? She's amazing. Lupita is so talented. Um, you know, her character, Nakia, is a bit different than the Nakia from the books. Uh, but she uh, has a great, there's a, I, I won't be spoiling anything to say, there's a great relationship between her and T'Challa. And uh, again, a, an actress we don't see live action as much as we think we do. You know what I mean? A lot of what she's known for is motion capture. She's so talented and she's stunning and she's beautiful. And it's, again, we're, our cast up and down, Denai Guerrero, Michael B. Jordan, Forrest Whitaker, Daniel Kaluuya, who now is a household name. Uh, a young actress, Letitia Wright, who plays Shuri, um, Martin Freeman. I mean, you just keep going. Every day we'd walk on set and somebody new would start and we'd get excited again because everybody from top to bottom is so talented. I've mentioned the Falcon and you know, the Big Fury, but if we go back in time, 19 years ago, the Marvel Empire and cinema started with a black hero that mm -hmm. was played by mm -hmm. the Wesley Snipes. Absolutely. How do you, if you analyze it during this period of time, how do you think the representation of Afro-American actors has, uh, heroes in fact, has changed through Marvel films and through cinema? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I mean, Blade, you know, Wesley <laughs> Snipes' Blade is sort of his own thing. There's so much attitude to that character. That yeah, and, uh, I, the first two movies were, were awesome. Um, you know, Blade as a character is sort of a lone wolf, so you don't get to see him interact a lot with people. And I think when you get characters like Sam Wilson, to some degree Nick Fury, who are a little bit more people persons and who can interact with a lot of different people, I think it it's a different portrayal because it's not sort of the lone gunslinger, which is a bit distancing. You know, I think everybody likes Blade, but nobody really wants to hang out with Blade. You know what I mean? People want to hang out with Sam Wilson and Nick Fury. And uh, I think being approachable is important. Uh, from a character standpoint because I think y you embrace those characters more. Um, so I think there's room for all of them though. You know, I, you're right, Blade is a, a huge benchmark character, um, uh, as was Nick Fury. So I think it's just, I think, making sure there's a lot of different kinds of characters for everybody. Because everybody has a different thing that you're going to plug into. You may love Blade, somebody else may love Black Widow, somebody else, you know, may love Bruce Banner for different reasons. Um, I think not restricting anybody by race or gender into being a certain type is the most important thing. Is that, are we gonna see? Last question, guys. Right. Go ahead. Uh -oh. Has the uh, post credit scene already been shot? What a perfect way to end Well, thank you guys for coming out. Thank really excited to have you here. Yeah, I'm 38. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long pause. <laughs> hey, great job. Yeah, thank you. Guys, so what we're going to do, um, if you can yeah, get your you. reporters, you can leave your stuff here. We're going to go talk to Anna Pizza.